Hi everybody, have you been looking at what GPU to buy for your creative workflow? Well today we have an epic battle. We're going to be testing out the RTX 4090 versus the RTX 3090. That's Nvidia's flagship GPUs from the last generation as well as the current generation. So we're going to be looking at what is the best performance per dollar for your GPU requirements for your studio or for your artist workflow. Hi everybody, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Review and on our channel we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. Today's technical requirement is GPU performance. So for those that have been watching my videos for a long time and those that are new to the channel, I've kind of been offline for well over a year now and I have relocated from Malaysia to Vancouver and it's been hard for me to, you know, get those relationships with the vendors and the equipment manufacturers, you know, in my new location. So I do have, a, you know, a few of them that I've been working with lately and I was able to get my hands on some GPU. And these machines are actually, I'm going to be logging in remotely on my laptop down to a data center down in LA. And I've been using machines from a company called RFX, specifically RFX VI. And I'll put a link in the comment section below. So RFX sells, you know, a lot of software and hardware to the creative industry in the Los Angeles area. And they were kind enough to, uh, you know, allow me to log into these remote systems and be able to do these comparisons today. So the systems that I'll be uh, comparing themselves, they're actually identical. They're two identical boxes. Uh, they're using the AMD Ryzen 7950X as well as an MSI, an X670E uh, ACE motherboard. I'm going to be using 128 gigs of RAM. Uh, it'll be running at 3,600 uh, mega transfers. You know, that's due to AMD's limitation when you add more than 64 gigs into one of these desktop motherboards. You have to run the RAM a little bit slower. Um, they're using uh, Samsung 980 Pro, one terabyte NVMEs, and they have a 1300 watt power supply. But other than the graphic cards, the systems are identical. The cooling systems, everything about them, the case. So it'll be a real apples to apples comparison. So we'll be testing out the uh, 3090 FE versus the 4090 FE. So again, it's, you know, it's Nvidia's graphic cards designed and developed by Nvidia themselves and manufactured for Nvidia. Uh, but if you're not familiar with the FE cards, they're not a three fan solution. Uh, they're more like what you see on screen here. We see, you know, the fan solution on the 4090 is, you know, it's quite a large graphic card and it has kind of a, an intake and an outtake fan as well as it's almost like a blower style. It's also blowing air straight through and out the, uh, where we plug in the DP ports and the HDMI. Uh, the 3090 was kind of done the same way. That was their first dive into that kind of cooling system. Uh, one of the things that NVIDIA has really done with the 4090 is they have actually created quite a good cooling, uh, you know, design for that card. It keeps the card quite cool for the amount of, you know, power and performance that it provides. So let's take a look at the specs of these two cards. So as you see on screen, the 3090 was the GA102 and it was an eight nanometer process. And on the 4090, we have the AD102, which is a five nanometer process. For the CUDA cores, we have 10,496 for the 3090 and 16,384 for the 4090. So that's quite the increase in CUDA cores. There's also an increase in tensor cores with 512 on the 4090 and 328 on the 3090. For RT cores, we have 82 on the RTX 3090 and we have 128 on the RTX 4090. Now, one of the places that NVIDIA really did step up their game here was increasing the base clock frequency. So it's 2,235 megahertz on the RTX 4090 and it's 1,395 on the RTX 3090. And then for a boost clock, we have 1,695 on the 3090 and we have 2,520 on the 4090. They both use 24 gigabytes of GDR6X memory on a 384-bit bus. But where there's a major difference in these cards is the power usage on the 3090, which was considered quite high at the time, was 350 watts. And on the RTX 4090, it's 450 watts. So I have personally you know, ran higher wattage on both of these cards. Uh, for the 4090, I've had it up to just over 600 watts uh, with a, you know, a little bit of overclocking and really pushing that to its full performance. But that's a lot of power that's running in one computer box and you need a lot of cooling that goes with that. The MSRP at the time of launch on the 3090 was 1,499 US dollars. And at the time of launch of the 4090, it was 1,599 US dollars. So it's only an increase of about $100. Let's start benchmarking these GPUs. 
So we're going to use uh, basic event marks that anybody can download off the internet. And I get a lot of comments in my videos about why do you tweak this or set that setting, you'll get faster performance. And what I'm really trying to do is leave this at sort of like a baseline so that anybody can just download these and use them the way they are without changing any configurations. And it'll give them some sort of comparison to, you know, the performance of their GPUs compared to, you know, what we're doing in this video. So we're going to start off with the Blender, the classic classroom. You know, it's not going to stress the GPUs up very much, uh, but it's still going to give us kind of a benchmark to maybe something that people have been using for quite a long time. So this is the RTX 3090 system, and we're just going to hit render. And while that one's rendering in the background, uh, we're going to connect to the other machine here, and this is the 4090, and we're going to hit F12 and render that scene out as well. And we'll see how long that one takes. Uh, I suspect the 4090 should be faster, uh, but we'll see exactly how much faster. So we're here at eight seconds. That finished this render in about 10 seconds. And then the other one finished on the 3090 in about 20 seconds. So almost, well, exactly twice the performance in these two GPUs. Now, again, this isn't the best scene. These are kind of synthetic, if I almost want to call it that, uh, benchmarks. So let's check out some other benchmarks. So this is another classic blender benchmark scene. Uh, again, I would call it, uh, you know, sort of a synthetic benchmark, but this is the BMW rendering on GPU. And it's rendering that uh, relatively quickly. It looks like it's going to take about six, seven seconds to render out. And there we are finished at 11 seconds. So let's check it out on the RTX 4090. So it's the exact same render as the other machine. And we're rendering that in six seconds as opposed to the 11 seconds that it took on the RTX 3090. So it's pretty quick. Okay, and just for anybody that, you know, has questions of how we're rendering this out, if we go into preferences and we come down to system, I do not have optics turned on. I just have CUDA with the RTX 4090 and no CPU uh, is assisting with this render whatsoever. So uh, just a little trick, if this is actually grayed out here, you might need to come into the preferences and just toggle this on and off before you'll get your GPU over here. Some people that aren't familiar with Blender might run into that issue. So another scene that I like to use that kind of stresses the GPUs out quite a bit more than your basic classroom or BMW scene is the Sobo Noodle House. And I'll put a link in the comment section below for anybody that wants to download this and try it out. And it has been updated. The scene itself has been updated to use cycles. And once you download it, and again, for those that may not be familiar with using Blender, you may need to relink those files. So if you come down to File, External Data, Find Missing Files, once you've extracted the whole thing, you can just point it at the Blender maps that come with it, and then click Find Files find missing files, and it's going to find all the missing files that are in the, the scene itself. So on the RTX 4090, it rendered the scene in about a minute and 39 seconds. On the RTX 39, it did render it in three minutes and 43 seconds. So that took over twice the amount of time to render the same scene. So moving on to some other benchmark scores, we run the basic uh, V-Ray, CUDA, and RTX scores. So for the RTX 4090, we had a score for CUDA of 4,331. And on the RTX 3090, we had 2,056. That's quite a bit of an improvement for performance for these uh, synthetic benchmarks. On the RTX scores for the V-Ray, we had 5,816 for the 4090, and we had 2,887 for the 3090. Another good test to use uh, that I use quite often is the Octane benchmark. And for the RTX 4090, we had 10,020.43, and we had 526.23 for the RTX off test. So once we turn RTX on, it does give a higher score. And on the RTX 4090, we have 1306.07. And on the RTX 3090, we have 675.57. So again, I'm seeing quite an improvement between the RTX 3090 and 4090 over the last generation of this current generation. And one of the last uh, GPU benchmarks that I like to test out is the Redshift benchmark itself now. This actually gets installed when you install Redshift itself. It's in the app data folder under the bin. And there is a, a command line utility that you can run there. And it does uh, basically one file and it tells you how long it takes to render out that Redshift scene. It doesn't require any other applications that will run standalone with Redshift. Uh, you can do it both with the trial and with the uh, licensed version. Um, but just make sure that when you're downloading it, you know, that the benchmark will actually run correctly. So for the RTX 4090, we had 80 seconds, and the RTX 3090, we had 143 seconds.
So overall, the RTX 4090 is outperforming the 3090 by quite a lot, in some cases up to twice the performance. Now, again, these are synthetic benchmarks. Um, you know, when it comes to real world work and rendering out, uh, your results may vary. Uh, but these are, you know, a good benchmark or a good baseline that you can look at. Um, if I spend a hundred more dollars and I spend a lot more money maybe in power consumption, am I getting what I need to, you know, render out for a render farm or for if it's a standalone, maybe independent artist workstation. So one of the other things that I look at is the SpecView Perf benchmarks. So if you download the SpecView workstation, uh, and I'll put a link in the comments section below, you can run a whole bunch of tests on your whole machine that kind of give it a, a score. Um, you know, you can only really compare it to other SpecView benchmark scores to see how it does. Uh, but there is uh, a Maya and a 3D Max benchmark that's in there uh, that you can use, and that's for interaction. This isn't a rendering uh, or a GPU performance for rendering benchmark. This is more of an interaction um, benchmark, and it works really well. So for the SpecView workstation, under Maya test, we had 8.62 for the RTX 4090, we had 6.92. So it was only an increase of about 30%. Now when it came to 3D Max, we had the same about 30% increase, but it was 9.11 for the RTX 4090 and it was 6.02 for the RTX 3090. So it's kind of showing you that even with just interaction and not just pure render power, uh, these GPUs do perform a lot better, but again, you may not need either one of these, you know, uh, 3090 or 4090, depending on your workload. If you're an animator, you're gonna need a lot of VRAM, uh, but you might not need all those CUDA cores and all that extra cost and all that extra power that's required and be able to perform your job just as efficiently as you would with, say, you know, a 3080 or a 4080 or even a, you know, 3070 graphic card. Uh, just make sure that, you know, because you can cache in Maya and cache a lot of your animations to the graphic card, um, that you have enough VRAM. So, and I just want to be clear, VRAM does not equal more computing power. Uh, and I'm going to do a whole video on that. VRAM is just a container that holds the payload. And if the payload can fit within the container, having more RAM just means you can put a larger payload into that container. But that doesn't mean that it speeds up your rendering. You know, unless, again, your payload's larger than your RAM and um, you know then you're running into a whole different world there's a a lot of problems about offloading memory and it's shifting back and forth and again I'll do a whole video on that but don't you know equate VRAM to performance all right VRAM is just a container that holds a payload while you're doing your workflow so my take overall on you know comparing these two GPUs the 3090 is still a good GPU and it still has a lot of computing power. Um, you know, you can get them on the market today for, you know, price has actually dropped quite a bit. And since, you know, MSRP and the, you know, 2021 debacle that we had with the GPU shortage, you know, the price skyrocketed and then it came down to as low as about $900 for an RTX 3090. Um, now stocks are starting to dwindle for the 3000 series NVIDIA graphic cards and prices are starting to creep back up a little bit, but you could probably still get a 3090 for about hopefully $1,100 US. Um, and a 4090, if you're going to get an FE, it'll be $1,600. So, you know, it all depends on what you want to do. The other comparison or the other factor to keep in mind here is the amount of power that it consumes. And these GPUs consume a lot of power. And depending on where you are in the world and how much you pay for electricity, uh, that might mean the difference between, you know, doubling your, you know, your uh, utility bills every month just by running that GPU. It also might mean, you know, if you live in a warm area, if you're running that GPU in a, a small room, that room is going to get quite hot and you're going to need to, you know, either have air conditioning or be in a cooler environment. I live up here in Canada, of course, during the winter months, uh, we just open the window. But what do we do in the summertime? And we don't want to overheat our GPU. So, you know, those are factors to consider when you're buying a graphic card. If you're just out there, you want to have the best, you can afford the best, um, buy the 4090. It is outperforming the 3090 in some cases by 50%, so, or more, and being able to render a lot faster. If time is an issue for you, buy the 4090. All right, render it out. It's going to take half the amount of time. Your iterations between rendering an image and just looking at it is going to take half the time. Everything about it is going to be faster, but that comes at a cost. So, you know, um, put it in the comment section below. What GPU would you buy 
if you know you have the choice here and and it's your company that you're having to spend the money for so i i really be interested into what my viewers think about you know what equipment they're currently buying and what equipment they can currently you know afford in this market so that's about it for this video uh, i will be doing some more videos i'm going to do the 4090 against the new ada 6000 a graphic card that came out. I'm going to do the Ada 6000 versus the previous generation, the RTX 6000 cards, and do a comparison with those two. Uh, those are much more expensive cards. It's a completely different market. Uh, you know, it's between six and eight thousand dollars for a graphic card that you know has 48 gigs of RAM. And I'd really be interested to see how the 4090 and the new Ada 6000, which is basically uh, almost the same architecture, um, to see how they actually you know, perform against each other. So keep watching the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit notifications so that you can be notified when I release the new videos. Hopefully I'll have a lot more videos coming in the next few months. And I really appreciate you watching and have a great day.